It is, it is great to see you, and more importantly, happy Mother's Day uh, to all the mothers that are out there um, here, as well as those watching online. Uh, great day and a great, a great person to celebrate uh, for this day. Let's go to our Savior in prayer. And Father God, we come to you, and we thank you. And even, even though this is a special day for mothers, it always points back to you. It's your design. And Father, I pray, I pray for mothers to be blessed, to be challenged, that we'd all be challenged. That we'd have to come to this conclusion, we can't do it without you, Christ. And so, Father, as we have this worship service, uh, as we celebrate moms, as we hear from your word about parenting, we just come to sit at your feet, to adore you, to hear from you. We pray in your name. Amen. Well, it's good to be up here without that scooter and them crutches, so uh, I'm very uh, thankful for that and praise God for it. Got two more weeks. That's the only thing they know to say to me is two more weeks, two more weeks. So let's stand as we sing, Would You Bless Our Homes and Families? Our next one, one thing I want you all to do for me right now, just take a deep breath. All right. You'll understand when we get started on this song. Okay. <laughs>
take a deep breath and let's greet one another. Many uh, opportunities uh, coming up. I uh, don't want you to miss uh, any any of those. Um, that one of the opportunities this week is is not here, uh, so uh, we can celebrate Mother's Day. Some have some traveling to do today, uh, but we will resume with Disciple Life next week. Um, next Sunday, at the beginning of the service, we'll have our annual meeting, and uh, so uh, if uh, you have yet to do so, pick up a copy of our proposed budget. So when we ask. To vote it, you vote on it. Uh, you'll you'll be informed uh, about that. So again, that's next week. Also next week, um, um, there's a. a um, is it a vacation? Um, it's probably the next slide, but uh, we do need uh, uh, um, donations for Vacation Bible School. There is a yellow sheet in your bulletin, uh, and it has uh, a list of all the different food items uh, that you can supply, as well as uh, so there are some of the craft items that were mentioned last week, those soup cans and the small water bottles. I asked, I asked Charles, do those need to be emptied, and he said, yes. Um, so uh, drink them. Don't just dump them. Drink them, then bring them in. So uh, again, uh, those, those items are, are listed there for, for you. And this is the slide I was waiting for. Vacation Bible School, we do have a, another workers meeting, and that is going to be also on the 21st. So all that's next week. Um, and uh, again, volunteers still, still are needed for that. The next Sunday, the 28th, is uh, following the service. We'll have our Memorial Day cookout, and this is a great time to invite uh, someone to church and say, hey, I'll take care of your lunch. And, uh, and we, we will, we will. So again, uh, one of the things that we ask always from the congregation, bring a dessert, and you've yet to fail in that area. And, um, but uh, we'll take care of the hot dogs and hamburgers and the other, other items as well. And, uh, and then um, the next Sunday, just going one Sunday after the other, the fourth, is Graduate uh, Recognition Sunday. And so if you know of a gra graduate, um, please let us know. Uh, you can call the church office or you can write it down on a piece of paper and hand it to me. And uh, that way we can recognize them. We like to put, you know, their name, where they're graduating from, with what degree, uh, as well as an address. So if people want to send cards and maybe something in the cards uh, uh, to them. So please give that information by the 31st of, of this month. Um, now looking at uh, prayer uh, items, um, going through, through our list, um, please continue praying for Francis at, uh, um, again, just various health. It's gotten some better, but just continue, continue praying for her. Notice I didn't have you on there. So not that you don't need prayer. He needs it. But, uh, uh, but anyway, uh, pray for Brian. Um, uh, uh, he, has, uh, he has had vascular surgery. 
Um, and so uh, recovering from that, but then there, there's just still some needs there. Um, and while I have that up, uh, pray for David, uh, Nikki's son as well, and, and his wife having COVID. So please uh, continue to pray, pray for, for them. Um, not this week, but next week. I got confused about uh, what week is what, but uh, uh, Doug has shoulder surgery. And so uh, please pray for him and Becky as, uh, as they face that together. Um, should be there sometime today is what uh, Jessica uh, said, uh, but he is en route to India on a mission trip with his church. And so uh, pray for Ben and also pray for, for Jessica and family as he, as he is gone. Um, and then remember Barry as he is uh, at a, a kind of a respite care right now. And again, future surgeries uh, coming up. And um, remembering Michelle and just her needs as she's under hospice care. And uh, again, we pray for what God can do. Uh, the doctors have said there's nothing we can do, but we know a God that can go far beyond that, any expectation that we have. Um, and then uh, Linda, uh, she is recovering from her hip surgery at home. And uh, from what I hear, traveling well on her walker, uh, getting answering doors and stuff like that. <laughs> Some, uh, somebody went to visit and you never know around here what door to go to, you know. So <laughs> anyway, anyway, so remember Linda as, as well. Other prayer needs this morning. A praise, that's, that's great. Awesome, awesome. Okay, we've been praying for Tiffany and she does not have cancer. That's awesome. All right. Awesome. Awesome. Okay. We'll do that for Brandy. All right. All right. Well, let's go to our Savior in prayer. Maybe it's on no one's list, but it's on your heart. Tiffany, that, uh, that it is not cancer. Uh, Father, to, to see Doug up here without uh, any aid, uh, we thank you for, for that. And, and Father, just continued help uh, as he recovers. Father, we pray for um, Brandy, who Libby mentioned. And Father, for whatever further tests or surgeries that are needed, uh, we pray. Father, we, we pray for Frances and her need for um, uh, just again, um, some of the, the, the limited mobility and, and speech. I uh, thank you that some of that's better, but we just continue to pray for her. 
uh, for Brian and um, as he recovers from this vascular surgery, also for, for David and his wife as they recover from COVID. We pray for, for Doug uh, as he has shoulder surgery in, in just a little more than a week, and we, we pray that you will just lead in that. We pray for Ben as he is on mission uh, to India. And Father, be with he and his team with, um, as they share the good news of Christ wherever they go. Through acts of kindness, through building projects. But I pray that the door opens that it's not just what they do, but who they're doing it for. In the name of Christ. We continue to pray for Barry and his, his long uh, illness. And, and we just pray for, for it to, to turn, make a good turn. We pray for Michelle. And again, we ask what only you can do. We ask for your healing on her. For Linda, uh, thank you that she was able to go home. And we just pray as she gets the strength and recovery. God, I also, I, I look out there and seeing Basil and uh, Father, that he's well enough to be able to come um, with uh, just the back issues that he's had and many others. Thank you that I see there are many here right next to their mom or, or in the same room as the mom now and celebrating her. And so, Father, we, we thank you for when family can get together. And now I pray that in the ways these needs are answered, may you receive the glory. May it grab the attention of those who don't know you. And Jesus, give us your eyes to see the harvest that is ripe to harvest and give us the feet and the mouth that brings good news. We pray in your name. Amen. The come and play for us today. Uh, the song is the the Lord is my shepherd, or my shepherd will supply my need. It comes under a couple of different names. But looking forward to this, this is one of my favorite, favorite songs. And I just ask it. I'm just thankful that you're willing to do this for our Lord and Savior.
Thank you, Max, and thank you, Cindy. Today is uh, Mother's Day, and um, uh, we always like to take a little time to, to recognize mothers. But before that, let me ask the children that are going to children's worship to make their way um, to, the, to the front pew over here. And Angela, if you would make your way, way down, and I might need to enlist uh, those who are, are maybe youth uh, and uh, 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 maybe even college age to help out. Those who we know get that, uh, uh, let's have a seat right over here, right over here. And so we are going to, they're, they're going to help hand out. Uh, uh, little gifts to all the mothers. That's why they may need some help there in just a little bit. So thank you, thank you. I'm looking at some, some of the youth going, yes, to you, okay. Um, but uh, again, we like to remember moms on Mother's Day um, to, to rise and call her blessed. Yeah, and you welcome. Yes, yes. Thank you, James. Um, and um, but but before, and I, I I'd rather end on a you know happy note, but 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 at the same time, this is very significant, especially on Mother's Day. It's a very hard day because your mom isn't here. But I want to give you the opportunity, those whose moms have have passed away, for you to rise in her stead to honor her today. And so, if you would, stand. And Jesus, we thank you for the moms that are represented. And we thank you that what they began is continuing on. We thank you for these moms. I pray in your name. Amen. Amen. You may be seated. Then this is the bragging section of, of the service where, all righty, who has been a mom that's present? Like I know some that, that who aren't who, who aren't here. Um, but who's been the mom the longest? Now that means who has, it's not telling your age, it's telling the age of your firstborn. So if you have been a mother for 30 years, would you raise your hand? All right, look around, look around, look at all those hands that are up. All righty, all righty. Put those hands down, all right. How about, I, and I mean, and more, and more. Okay, Let, let's just, just jump up 10. 40 years, you have been a mother for 40 years or more. Raise those hands high and proud. I said, I'm trying not to, you know, raise my hand because you know I'm not. So, all right, look at, you know, oh, not as many hands, uh, uh, obviously, but uh, not, that, not that many went down. All right, now put those down. Let's get up to... 50, 50, and you've been a mom for more than 50 or more years. I see right here, Faye and Peggy, Nikki and uh, Carolyn and Emily. And I see Linda. All righty. We'll just jump to 60. That means your oldest child is 60 or more. Any other hands? Oh, I see two hands. All righty. Just tell me the age of your first. Don't tell them their name because they may be really embarrassed. So how, 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 how many years have you been a mother, Nikki? 60. 60. Right at 60. Emily, how, how many years have you been a mother? 63. 63. 63. Emily, would you rise and... Uh, And now the next one, and we kind of know the, because it's always the same person. Um, <laughs> how many?
many, th those who have, have had more heads to keep up with uh, and, and all that. Uh, again, just I like to get us there. Three, three or more, three or more, if you would raise your hand. Three or more, all righty. Four or more, let's keep that hand up, Sharon. Uh, <laughs> Three or four. I said four more. Five or more. Five or more. You got them duking out right here. Six or more. All righty. I got. Well, we got. We got a challenger here this year. All righty. More. How many? And nine. Wow. Wow. Christine, would you stand? All right, all righty. Now, um, the the newest. She <laughs> she's already laughing. You know, she has the baby with her to prove it. Um, how old is Anna Grace? Three months. Three months. Anybody beat that? <laughs> all right, Samantha. Would you stand? Would you stand? All righty most recent mom and so alrighty a great celebration um, now I would like to ask all mothers uh, let me let me finish I'm gonna ask all mothers to stand and then the children and some other helpers are gonna pass out a gift so if you would remain standing until you've received uh, your gift from that the children made this this past Wednesday night uh, and just honoring you uh, today. So now moms, would you please stand? Would you stand? And let's give them a hand. And then when the children are done passing out, if y'all just make your way over to that exit sign. And meet with your teachers. Still got a big group over there. All right, y'all make your... Do we have... We still got a couple more standing. One more over here. Go ahead. Let's hear it for our moms again. And we'll have the children over here, and let me pray as, uh, as we send you off to children's worship. All right. And Jesus, I, again, just thank you for these children. And uh, Father, for uh, this time that they have to look in your word and uh, to know your truth, I pray in your name. Amen. Amen. Thanks for your help, guys. We will be um, in Deuteronomy chapter 6. Deuteronomy chapter 6. We're taking a week off from our study in, in 1 Corinthians. And this is one of those used quite often for occasions like this, but it's because the, the truth that, that is in, in it and... Um, so we're going to be in Deuteronomy chapter 6, verses 1 through 9. Um, I've got kind of, we're going to look at some other passages uh, leading up to this study and, and just seeing the truths uh, regarding Christ-centered 
uh, parenting. Uh, before we begin, let me pray. Father, as we look in your word, as we look at this whew, this job, this, this privilege, this blessing, um, this challenge of being a parent, whether mom or dad. And Father, we, we pray. I, I pray these words can be a challenge at the same time, an encouragement. Uh, and Father, for those who are, are, are whether they're mothers um, or fathers, or, or God, you've put them in a relationship of mentoring or discipling uh, that these same principles can be utilized in teaching your truth. Lead us in your word, we pray. Amen. Amen. I wanted to begin with uh, just a, a couple statements that are uh, opposed to each other. One, we have the world's lie, and on the other hand, we have God's truth. The world's lie when, when it comes to anything regarding life is, life is about me. <laughs> it's about me, myself, and I. It's, it's, you know, how can I be better? How can I do this? How can I, what's, what's in it for me? And, and what God is teaching in his word over and over again is life is not about me. It's not about you. It's about him. It's about God. It's, in, it's about Christ and what he's done for us. And this spills over into every area of our life, but particularly, you know, you know when we look at parenting. But, but just summing, summing just this up is that true living, if you want to live a true life, it's living for, for Jesus. And, and, and so when, when we look at what Jesus said about this, it's whoever wants to save his life, who, whoever, more, you know, what, what do we try to do when we try to save our life? It's about me and saving me, 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 me. No, no, no. <laughs> who wants to save his life will lose it. You're going to live a life like that, you're not going to live. But whoever loses his life for me will find it. Jesus also put it this way, the thief comes only to steal and kill and to destroy. So don't go under the lie of, I, I'm in it for me. I, Jesus says, I have come that they may have life and have it to the full. True living is only found in Christ. Now, when it comes to parenting, with those, tr if this is true, and it is, that, that true living is not living for yourself, it's living for Christ, it's living in the power of Christ, we need to parent with the end in mind. In Proverbs 22, 6, it, it says this, train a child in the way he or she should go. Um, now, that word train is, is a word that could also be translated, start them, get them directed to the way they are to go. Parents, our job is to aim our children in the right way. Now, according to what we just talked about, where are we aiming our children? To Christ. Train a child in the way he should go, and when he is old, he will not turn from it. We need to parent with the end in, my, in mind. Now, when it comes to specifically, that's general parenting, but specifically moms. Uh, I forgot where I got this quote, so I'm sorry. But children's values and morals are shaped in the earliest years. The years when the children's primary caregiver is mom. Uh, another, um, Benjamin Bloom, a professor of education at the University of Chicago, had this statement, by the age of four, a child has formed half the intelligence he will have at maturity. Think how much input those first few years of life. <laughs> and good old Napoleon Bonaparte, he said something that, Thought-provoking. The future destiny of a child is in the work of a mother. And so as we're looking at parenting in general, we realize, you know, mom's, mom's way. But, but I, I want to talk about parenting. 
and going back to the world's lives. Parenting the world's ways. Because sometimes if you don't point out some of the aspects of that, it's very easy to be caught up in it because we're in the world. And it's very easy to be squeezed into its mold. Parenting the world's way will result in self-centered adults. And there's two kind of basic ways of parenting the world's way. And the first way is parent-centered parent parenting. Parent-centered parenting. What, what in the world is that? That is when the needs of the parent outweigh the needs of the child. And they go on, oh, come on, parents don't do that. No way. They would, they, they, you know, it's all about the children. Oh, how much do they support, you know, all that. It was just abuse. Obviously physical, you know, and horrible and all that, but, but there's emotional abuse. There's the guilt. There's the, all the things that are thrown at children as a manipulation to make them do what we want them to do. Where the career, that the work has a priority, where, where, where it's easy to become a workaholic and all that, and, and in your mind you're going, I'm providing for the family, I'm providing for the family. Yes, you are, but there's a greater provision of the family to be there. And there's a balance in that, I know. And then many times we live through their accomplishments. Their accomplishments are about me. You know, hey, look at my kid. Look at that. Look at, you know, and again, there's, there's, there's a balance. There's this genuine pride and all that. But, but then sometimes <laughs> it's how you make me look. Now, let me, let me share. That is one of the hardest things that a preacher's family has. And that's something that Candy and I have stro strove, and we've talked to our kids more and more times ago. There's a lot of people that have expectations because you're a preacher's kid. We have no expectations on you because I'm a preacher, but because I'm a believer in Christ. And I want you to know the truths of Christ. Because it can be very easy. You're making me look bad. That can't be the motivation. Or it could be, you know, look at me, look at all the things I've paid for for my kids, all the things. You know, and again, again, parent-centered parenting, where the focus really is parents, me. What does this raise? It results in insecure children. <laughs> where they ask the questions, am I good enough? Will, will I ever measure up? Now, now you're thinking, how is this self-centered? Adults, well, am I good enough? You know, and then they're thinking, I, me, you know, and I'm there, and you go to counseling, or, you know, stuff like that. Well, I never measure, and the focus still is on I, 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 I. Again, another way of parenting the world's way is child-centered parenting. You have parent-centered parenting, you have child-centered parenting, and, and everything is about the child's happiness. How many times have I heard this? And, and, and again, there may be some people guilty, and sometimes you say it and all that. All I want for them to be is happy. I know, there's some who said that. I, I, maybe all of us have said that somewhere, somehow. That is not the goal for our children. And so for parents, I just want them to be happy, you know. And so a parent becomes more of a friend than a parent. Uh, 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 discipline is, is lax. Gifts are abundant because you just want to keep, keep, them, keep them happy. At the end of the day, where is this child? Insensitive. Because life is about me. And everything was handed to me, and guess what? I'm now graduated and all that, and I, give me a job that's easy because life is about me. Theodore Roosevelt said this, some wisdom. 
If the mother does not do her duty, there will either be no next generation or a generation that's worse than none at all. When we look at society in general right now, and all I have to go on is in the United States, and what I see here in snippets here and there, we've had a lot of worldly parenting, even in the church. What is parenting God's way? Well, as the title of this message, it is Christ-centered. It's not about the parent. It's not about the child. It's about Christ. And this will, I mean, it's kind of, it results in Christ-centered adults if they become believers. Christ-centered adults. What's the goal? What's the goal in Christ-centered parenting? The goal is God's glory, not the parents. You know, oh, you make me look really good. No, no. We want God to get the glory. The goal also is their holiness over happiness. Uh, look at a couple passages with me. When you want to see what God's way of disciplining is, you go to Hebrews 12 and he says, Our fathers disciplined us for a little while as they thought best. But God disciplines, okay, so now we're talking about, this is how God raises us. He disciplines us, meaning sometimes he has to be harsh, for our good that we may share in his holiness. That's the good. And the good is only found in Christ. We have none of his holiness unless Christ is in us. And it goes on. No discipline is, seems pleasant at the time, but painful. Later on, however, it produces a harvest of righteousness and peace for those who have been trained by it. The goal is, there, is God's glory. The goal is their holiness. Now, this brings us to our text. I told you there's going to be a little lengthy part before we get to our text. Deuteronomy chapter 6, verses 1 and 2. These are the commandments, decrees, and laws the Lord your God directed me, this is Moses, uh, to teach you to observe in the land that you are crossing the Jordan to possess. Okay, so the children of, uh, of Israel that, that, that left Egypt, that then wandered in the wilderness, and now this is the next generation, and Moses is bringing them right to the edge, and he's talking to them and saying, okay, you're getting ready to cross, you're going to become your own nation, and, and so here's Here's rules, <laughs> here's laws, here's commands, here's decrees. Does that sound fun? No. Why? So that you, your children, and their children, and, and, and so on, after them may fear the Lord your God as long as you live by keeping the decrees and the commands I give you. So, so I, Moses say, I am telling you, here's God's rules for life. Here's how we should be living. This is what we should be striving to do. <laughs> so that it's not just you, but your next generation and the next generation after that. Now listen, listen, after reading that, you're going, oh great, now we're going to go through a long list of rules. Now in the book of Deuteronomy, it does, it does. Um, but uh, we're not going to go there. It just says, but look at, look at this. You're thinking, oh rules, I'm going to feel so down, I'm going to feel so bad, I'm going to feel so guilty, I'm going to feel all this other stuff. Why, why are you giving me all these rules? Well, listen, living rightly, God's way results in living fully. <laughs> so that you may enjoy long life. 
God was not telling the people of Israel, Israel to be miserable. You know, they were saying, you know, oh, I want you can't do this, you can't do this, you can't do this, and so just so you can squirm. No. So that you live a long life. And not just live a long life. Enjoy a long life. God is not there to, to make you miserable. And he goes on. Hear, O Israel, and be careful to obey so that it may go well with you and that you may increase greatly. Now listen, listen, I don't like necessarily hearing about, well, here's the rules and all that, but listen, I want things to go well with me. I want things in life to increase greatly in a land flowing with milk and honey just as the Lord your God but your fathers promised you. And he's saying, listen, I'm not telling you these commands so that you're miserable, but so that you can have my blessings. Living rightly results in living fully. See, again, I read this earlier. The thief comes to steal, to kill, and destroy. He's going to keep telling you the lies that God's just trying to keep you from really enjoying life. No, Jesus came. And we may have life and live it to the full. And, and let me just, just stop right here. And I'm going to go and explain this, but just so that you really catch it. There's this list, long list. There's a restaying of the Ten Commandments. And guess what? Part of knowing what the rules are and that this is God's, you know, what he's saying to do is about coming to the place of going, I can't. I need him. I need Christ. Because I'm not there. Continuing on, how do we do this? How do we teach the next generation? How would I, it tells us parents need to model. Parents need to model. We need to live it out. It, it says in verse 4 through 6, Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God, the Lord is one. You know, just this is who we are serving. Here's who we are obeying. Love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your strength. Something that Jesus repeated later saying, this is the number one commandment. Um, these commandments that I give you today are to be upon your hearts. Who's he talking to? Who's Moses talking to? That first generation of the people that are going to be in, in the promised land. I'm telling you, so it's on your hearts. Before we talk about it going to the children, you've got to live it. You've got to know it. You have to believe it. You can't pass on what you don't have. 1 Timothy 1, Paul is, is, is talking to Timothy and he's talking about his mom and his grandmother. He says, I've been reminded of your sincere faith, which first lived in your grandmother Lois and in your mother Eunice. And I'm persuaded now it lives in you. Where did you get a sincere faith, Timothy? From your mama and from your grandmama. You can't have, you can't pass down what you don't have. Do you have a relationship with Christ? Parents not only need to model, and where he first says, okay, first of all, it starts with you, first generation. How do we go to the next generation? One, through discipline. Let's just get the hard one out of the way. Impress them. <laughs> Impress them on your children. Impress them on your children. King James says, teach them diligently. New American Standard uh, also the, the teaching them diligently. It's the word to sharpen. Iron sharpens hot iron. But guess what? Iron doesn't sharpen iron unless it's rubbing against each other. 
<laughs> Regarding discipline, there's a Chinese proverb. It says, spank a child every day. If you do not know why, they will. <laughs> Whatever type of disciplining that you see fit. Um, Going back to to uh, the modeling modeling it, you know there was a there was a mother and she was they were having company and all this other stuff, and they asked the child, the little girl, to say the blessing. And the child, I don't know what to say. Just say what I say. And so the little girl bows her head and said, "Good Lord, why did I invite all these people?" <laughs> Anyway, back to modeling. Okay, so through discipline, through discipline, and, and discipline, you know, sometimes you got to say what's hard to hear. Sometimes you have to restrict. It, it, it's, it's making the point. It is, and I like this translation, impressing. What's it going to take to make the impression? Parents need to mold through discipline, through relationship, impress them on you. Then talk about them when you sit at home and when you talk, walk along the road, when you lie down, when you get up. Just saying basically in everyday life, it's not just about the correctional time and, and all right, I'm going to make you disciplined in a way of, okay, you know, do, do this and memorize this and da da, -da. But, but also let it be a part of life and just talking about the truth. It's life lessons, not classroom lessons. And so as life goes... Bringing the truths in. Parent, parents need to mold through discipline, through relationship, through example. Tie them as symbols on your hands and bind them on your foreheads. Now, this is something that was a very Jewish custom that comes from this passage where they would actually have this little, little boxes that contain scripture inside that, that they would wear here, or sometimes they, they had it where it'd be right here and, and stuff like that. And it was just to almost to be a visual reminder as I'm under the law. You know, I'm striving to obey the, the, the law. And, and so it was something visual, visual for the children to go and look and see. You know, they, they're following God. They're doing God's word. Being the example. When they see it's important to you, it will be important to them. Don't just do Teach why you do. Uh, wearing it on the head was, was supposed to go, why are you wearing that? And then you'd have that conversation. And the last point, and, and let me just share, I've got still a lot more to share. So once I get through this, you know, don't start putting yourself away, okay? So through example and then through atmosphere. Write them on the door frames of your, of your houses and on your gates. Now, let me, let me just, just put it this way. What is the atmosphere of your home? This was just to be a reminder as you're going in, you see this is a home. And in this home, you know, you know and I know we can have a little picture or picture with the words on there. It says, as for me and our, my house, we will serve the Lord. Listen, it needs to become a lot more than just a picture. It needs to be the truth of the home. But, but, but that is a reminder, a constant reminder that this is, this is the Lord's home. This is who we are following. But, but what, is, what does it look like? What is, what is the atmosphere of your house? Is it tension? Oppressive? Angry? Do you know what the atmosphere of the home should be for a believer in Christ? What comes from the Spirit of God? 
Is the atmosphere of my house love? I mean, should this not be? You know, you've got a believing a father and a believing mother together living in the power of Christ, dependent upon the Holy Spirit, and then the fruit of the Spirit comes out of their lives. It sets the atmosphere. Can you say, our house is a house of love, of joy, of peace? of patience, of kindness, of goodness, of faithfulness, gentleness. Wait, 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 you just told me about discipline. Huh? And gentleness and self-control. Now listen, all of these things that I've been talking about go home and do. And give me a call when you fail. I'll be getting calls within the hour. See, one of the things I need to be careful when we use Old Testament, I mean, again, there are God's standards and all this other stuff, but one of the reasons that God gave us the law was the law is to be a, a, a tutor that brings us to Christ and says, yes, this is the demands of God. And you're like, I can't do that. You're right. Let me introduce one who did it for you. And it cost him his life. And in Christ, one, he's already done it for us, but two, he will then do it through us as we submit our lives to him. Because listen, I don't care what the topic is, but parenting is one of the topics that when you start talking about it everybody some to some degree or another when you look in the mirror going man I blew it I remember we're blowing it here and I blew it here and I'm a, ah, I'm a terrible parent listen some of the best parents I know have probably had that conversation with themselves in the mirror I'm a horrible you know I can't I, you know, I can't. great this passage of scripture should frustrate you too we're not to do it in our power. And if you are not a believer in Christ, there's no way. Like I said, I'll, I'll, you'll call me before you get home. This is where we need to say, Christ, I need you. Now listen, not just to be a better parent, but I just need you. And taking it outside of being parent or, or, or you're, you're wanting to be a good influence on other people and all that, listen, you need Christ. But you need Christ because, not for all those, you need him because you need Christ. Apart from him, we're dead. Apart from him, we'll keep going away from. Do you know Christ? But now... For those who are believers, knowing Christ, are you trusting him for what he can do in your children, in your grandchildren, and saying, it's not me, but you who lives in me. Paul wrote, I'm, I was, I'm crucified with Christ. Nevertheless, I live, yet not I, but Christ lives in me, through me. The life that I now live, I, I don't live by the flesh. I, I live by the faith in God. And so as I always close, I invite you. If you, you do not know Christ, I always hang out here at the front because I, I want to have a conversation with you where you are. Or maybe today you're just going, you know, 
when I look at, at that list, I'm pointing back here, but it's there for you. But, but when, I'm, when, I, when I'm looking at that list and going, you know what, that's not my home. My home is full of tension and anger and hatred and, and resentment. And you just want prayer. I'll be down here as well for you. But let's go to our Savior now. Jesus, I thank you. I thank you that your word is so clear. It, it tells how to do it. Um, but God, it, it, is, it is more than just at the end of the day, we, we have better households. It's about you receiving glory. It, it is about us trusting you. It is about a, a family that points people to you, Christ. And so I pray. I pray for our children. I pray for grandchildren. I pray for the people you bring in our life that we are to disciple, we are to mentor. To take these principles and surrender ourselves to you, Christ. To live you out into theirs. Thank you for the mothers who so display, so many times have shown your heart, God. And I know there are exceptions. But God, even that is not near to who, how much you love us. So help us to take this next generation And point them to you. I pray in your name. Amen. Amen. Let's close our service with a praise to God our Father um, for what he has done for us. Let's stand.